Hello, I just saw a video on, on TED which was regarding some of the children who are quite concerned about their appearance and uh, try to seek opinion from others whether they are ugly or beautiful. I thought to, to make this small or a short video for the YouTube to reassure everyone that appearance does not matter in human creation. What matters is our inner self, and I will talk about it in the light of the Quran. Those of us who haven't studied the Quran or never come across it, the Quran is a non-human thinking. It has, it has permanent values which are applicable to us as an external standard. Since we have a free will, that means we do not have any inner guidance and we can make choices and live by the consequences of those choices. For example, I can select course A or course B in life, but I cannot avoid the consequences of following a particular course which I have selected for myself. So choices define us and whatever are the consequences, these have two effects, one on my body and second on my inner self. I will talk about it slightly later. There is a book which is titled The Life in the Hereafter, What Does the Quran Say? by G. A. Parvez. This book is available free on the internet at islamicdawn.com. Islamic Dawn as one word. It is also available with Amazon and it covers all these issues in detail. And at the end of the book, there is a list of permanent values given and these are mentioned with, with references from the Quran. The Quran has declared the purpose of human life is to hold everyone accountable. So whatever we do, we are accountable for our deeds. In fact, the Quran has said the creation of the universe and the world and the earth is primarily for this purpose and nobody is dealt with unjustly. And these details are given in this book, which I have already referred. The Quran has also said that every human being, because of the possession of the free will, deserves respect and dignity. This is given in chapter 17, verse 70. It also declares that appearance is only for recognition which includes our names as well. What is important is what we do in this life, that is the righteous deeds, and these have to be done on a global basis. Obviously, we cannot do anything unless we think about it, because our thinking comes first and then our deeds. So Quran has put a lot of emphasis on our inner thinking. The self, before coming to the self, what we have within ourselves, First, we have a strong sense of identity, let's call it I. This I does not change as we live through our life. Second, we have emotions, which are in hundreds, and then there are scales for them. For example, we could be annoyed, we could be very annoyed, we could be very, very annoyed. Emotions have two parts, our feelings and our desires, and we can differentiate between the two. Then we have simple thinking, for example, we go out and we recognize people on the road, but we don't have to pay much attention to that. Then we have the ability to think about thinking, which is also called metacognition. This is the most important ability which only we as human beings possess, and this is where we make choices. This is where our free will comes in. Then we have linguistic abilities. That is, we can put our ideas into words and we have the ability to learn languages. And then we have memory, whatever we do in our life, for example, education, training, experiences, trials, tribulations, everything goes into our memory. We have a choice what we put into the memory, but once it is consigned to the memory, we cannot take it out. And then we have a body, physical body, which goes through physical environment and is affected by, by, by physical environment. 
Body is a sort of a tool. If we say our mind defines us, then body is a tool. Quran in 23rd chapter, 14th verse declares that we, when, when it says that mind is given to human beings, it says he turned him into a new creation. So it is mind, the use of mind, which actually defines us. So our appearance does not matter. Appearance is there only for recognition, nothing more. And that is why Quran says that every nafs, that is every self, will taste death. So Quran has separated ourself from our physical body. So we should consider body as a tool and live our life at a self level. But what is self? Self is our sense of identity and the formation of our self-concept which goes into our memory. So we should try to fulfill our memory with what is good and not negative because once it is there, it will affect our behavior and behaviors lead to our outcomes. So it is, Quran has, in the light of the Quran, this life is very important because it's a finite life. When we are born, we are equal. And it's very simple to test it. A child born anywhere does not know his or her color, gender, status, parents, place, nationality, religion, what language, what environment. It's just a child. Similarly, when we die, we are again equal. So all the problems are between our birth and death. And these are all human created. If we look around the world, we will see that wherever there are problems, there are human beings who create problems. And wherever there are less problems, it is human beings who solve the problems. So each one of us can be part of the problem or part of a solution at any point in time. A day comes and day goes. So it is important that we should keep these things in mind when we are living this life. More on it in another video. Thank you. Cheers.